Hello everyone, welcome to eGate AI. So in this video, I want to prove a point. I want to assume that you don't know anything about database management system and still, you know, I want to show you that within a lecture, you can learn and you can solve gate problem. Okay. And I want to show you that how scoring database management system paper is if you do it rightly. So this is one of the uh, example which I have taken and it came in gate 2013 exam. And the question was like this, that a relation from A to J attribute, A to H attribute was given, some functional dependencies were given, and it was told to find out the number of candidate keys, okay? So assuming that, assuming that you don't know anything, I'll first start with this relationship, right? So this says, this R is relationship with attribute A to H. That means R is a table with attribute A to H. These are some functional dependencies which are defined right and then you find candidate keys so let us first understand the underlying concept and then you solve this problem with me right let me start with an example let us assume this table in this table uh, you can see that uh, the table name is let's say student and then we have name age and gender attributes right now if i ask you that what is the age of student b you can quickly refer b and say that the age is 12. similarly you can answer gender of student c you can go to c and answer that the gender is female this is because name is unique here right and name can identify age that is name can derive age and name can derive gender right we can collectively write is write it as name can derive age and gender right this basically that name can derive age and gender is called functional dependency this functional dependency is defined with this database instance right let us add another entry to this database so i say that there is another student a which has joined the uh, class and the age is 12 and female is um, gender is female now because name is not unique you cannot say that name can identify age and gender because if i ask you what is the gender of um, student a now you are confused because there are two student a correct so that's how functional dependencies are defined now um, sometimes you know in some kind of problem there will be some database instances given and then you need to identify functional dependencies but because there is a way gate can ask question right and there is uh, there is the length to which we have to uh, be limited while asking the question so most of the time for you it is defined already that what is the functional dependencies right and this is what it is done so functional dependencies ch derive g means that c and h both attribute together can identify g for instance here with this another database in uh, uh, tuple which was added later or the student which was added later now we can say that name and age can determine gender you see how that if i ask you that what is the gender of student a with age 10 then now you know that student A with age 10 is male. You will not be confused because this student has age 12. Correct? So this is how two attributes together can define a third attribute. So this is CH can determine G. Right? And what is candidate key? The candidate key is the key or the combi uh, combination of attributes which can uniquely identify all the other attributes. Right? So those are candidate keys, okay? Now you know the basic concepts required to solve the problem. So let us solve this problem. The first thumb rule to identify the candidate key of a given relation is to start with functional dependencies and to check that what is the attribute which is missing in the right hand side. So for instance, the attribute D is missing here, right? What does it mean? It means that by using any other attribute or any combination, we can never identify D, right? So that means that in candidate key, D must be present there, right? Because by the definition, if D is not present, right, then 
we cannot identify d using any functional dependency and then it then the the combination of the key does not fulfill the criteria to be candidate key because candidate key has to identify all the attributes right so because d is missing here in the right hand side we will have to consider d in the in the combination of attributes which are going to form candidate keys now we try to find out can d be the candidate key so we call it d closer d closer means what are the attributes which d can identify now because we don't have any functional dependencies where d is in the left hand side d can only identify d correct that means it is not a candidate key but we know that d has to be there in the candidate key so we start to form combination of other attributes with d right so d and a could be one combination and we try to find out closer similarly we will have d b will have d c oh, sorry d c d e then d f then d g and then d h right and we try to find out closer so let's try to find out closer of da da means obviously da can identify da so da is there now using this functional dependency a can identify bc right so a can identify b and c right and then using this functional dependency b can identify c f and h right and then f can identify eg so it can identify e and g that's it we have a we have b we have c we have we because we had c we need not say uh, we need not write c two times we have d we have e f g h so all the attributes are identified and now we can say that d a is a candidate key correct now we try for db okay so db now db of course finds out db and b gives c f h and then f gives e g this f gives e g and then e gives a a so now we have all the attributes right a b c d no e is missing but we know that f can identify e and g so we can write e g right now this was supposed to be e okay so e g yeah so this is again a candidate key now let's try for d c so dc will identify d and c but we don't have any attribute with c any functional dependency with c or in combination with cd so this cannot identify any further attribute and this is not an, a candidate key right <coughs> now let's try for de so de will identify de of course and then e will give a bus with this functional dependency so this will come out to be da now we know that da these two were already combination of candidate key here right here so we know that with d and a we can identify all the other attributes we can directly say that de is a candidate key i hope you get this point let's try uh, in another example so df now we try to find out df so df df gives df and then f gives eg e and g and as i said that now we have d and e right and we know just we identified that d e is a candidate key in this example correct here so we know that this particular combination is also a candidate key now we try for d and g so dg will gives d and g but d and g cannot derive any further attribute so this is not a candidate key similarly for dh if you try to find out dh will just give d and h but there is no functional dependency with d and h individually or together so dh is not going to identify any candidate key further so this is also not a candidate key so we get four candidate keys one two three and four so we have the answer would be four candidate keys so so i hope uh, uh this was uh this was quick to understand uh, assuming and without knowing anything um, as the background you were able to solve this problem and this is how uh, you know this this much this easy is to solve the problem in database management system 
if you do it rightly okay so so i was just trying to prove my point that it's really easy to get score from this subject if you learn it right okay and i was just trying to show you that even if you don't know anything from um, uh, from the subject if you pay attention to the lectures uh, you will be able to solve problems like this so i hope you like this thank you for watching see you in the next lecture